بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم okay so in the next thing we'll try to move on to the troubleshooting routing concepts so probably in this section as well as the coming sections we will be focusing more on uh, troubleshooting the routing concepts in that there are plenty of things we'll see like the first thing we'll start up with something called a prerequisite because there are a few prerequisite things you need to know before you start the troubleshooting whether you are using a static routing or dynamic routing protocols so whatever it is you need to know some prerequisite things that's what we'll try to cover in the first video and then these are the steps like so probably the next thing you need to check the van connectivity we'll try to see what are the possible issues with the van connectivity we'll try to see them and then we'll jump into the actual routing troubleshooting so in the actual routing troubleshooting again the steps you need to check it totally depends upon what type of routing we are using so we'll be covering first let's say if i'm using a static routing then what are the things we need to check and in case if i'm using any of the dynamic routing protocols like ospf will see in a separate section if i'm using ehrp then what are the troubleshooting steps you need to do if you're using any other protocol like iss and then bgp and if you're doing some redistributions then what are the things we need to check and also route filtering troubleshooting as well so we'll, we'll see three different different sections probably as we progress in the advanced routing topics so probably here we start up with this thing so these these three are the prerequisite things you need to know basically that's what we are going to try we'll, we'll try to cover in this section here so let's get started here with uh, with the prerequisite first now prerequisite just like there are few things you need to know before you start troubleshooting anything so like there are there are few things like the first thing you need to know your network because whenever you are you decided to troubleshoot if you don't know your network then you actually don't know where to start with that's that's again the problem so you should know your network that means you should know your topology means how many number of sites you have how they are connected probably those information and what are the interfaces which goes to a lan and wan interfaces and also it includes something like the interfaces ip addressing what interfaces are used and then which routing protocol you are using for providing the end to end connectivity and how routing is going to work probably these are all things you need to know so this is just like let's say if you ask me to troubleshoot your network let's say i am a new to the company and I started working for a specific xyz company so the first thing what they expect me to know is uh, let's say I, i just started troubleshooting but simply i cannot jump into the routers and and start troubleshooting without knowing the network so we need to understand the network study the network so study the topologies or the documentations documentation diagrams and the configurations probably these are all the things you need to know so they all come under that so know your network that's the first thing you need to know and the next thing is you need to know the connectivity connectivity configurations as i discussed just now we should know which interfaces goes to which side like what are the interfaces and what is the ip addressing used and then what is the routing protocol being used to configure or to provide the reachability which routing is used let's say if i'm using ospf then you need to be well aware with the ospf protocol and the behavior of the ospf protocol how it works and how it behaves in this scenario these are all the things you need to know so that's what you generally learn in the technology part so if you if you just see the technology part what you learn in the previous sections you learn the concepts of ospf or concepts of ehrp protocol basically how they behave and how they work in different scenarios so in simple you need to know the connectivity configurations and also you need to understand the you need to understand the uh, network so the next thing is like you should have a good understanding of the core technology concepts that, that this this exactly means like uh, let's say you are running any ospf protocol then you should know how the ospf protocol works how it is configured how it behaves in a different scenarios and let's say if i'm using ehrp protocol the same thing if you're using bgp if you have some default routes let's say there is a default route here so you should know how the default route is configured how it works these are all the things because every protocol works in a different way 
the way they behaves, the way they are configured will be different. So you need to be aware of that particular protocol. So you don't need to be expert expertise in all, but you need to know at least the protocol which is used in your production network. So like the verification commands also will be part of understanding the core technology concepts. So once you understand the core technology concepts, the next thing is now you started troubleshooting the routing part, which means we are going to assume that our we are going to assume that your LAN is fine because first thing we need to confirm that your LAN is fine. So how we can confirm that? Let's say there is a PC here. So from this PC, we'll try to ping to the gateway. Let's say I'm going to ping to this 192.168.1.5. So when I generate a ping request from my PC, if I'm able to ping to my gateway, it automatically confirms that the LAN is okay. So again, we are not jumping into this uh, LAN troubleshooting part here because here we are going to assume that the LAN is perfect. Again, if there is any problem in the LAN, then probably you will be doing some kind of LAN troubleshooting. Uh, that's something what you generally see in the switching, switching troubleshooting, that, that's a main concept over there. But here we are going to confirm that the LAN is perfect. We don't have any issue in the LAN so that we can jump into the uh, troubleshooting the routing concepts. So that's what we are trying to do here. So we are trying to troubleshoot the routing part here and we will be assuming that the LAN is perfect so that we can jump into the WAN, uh, WAN troubleshooting or the routing troubleshooting. Okay, so again, you have to see the depending upon the number of uh, the actual users are facing the problem because sometimes what happens is maybe only that particular user is facing the problem. In that case, then there will be problem, there, there might be an issue with that particular PC. But let's say if all the users are facing the problem, then there might be a centralized issue with the router or maybe a reachability to the internet or whatever it is like centralized. So you need to uh, move, uh, we need to verify a few things. Based on that, we need to confirm whether the problem is in the LAN or in the WAN. So at this point of time, we are going to assume that the LAN is perfect. So we're not getting into the LAN part here. Now, finally, the last thing is you need to know where the problem is, because once we say that, OK, the problem is not in the LAN, the problem is in the WAN. Let's say there is a user here and this user complains that he's not able to access the Internet, let's say. Now, to reach the Internet, there are multiple routes. So the first, the packet may go to the, let's say the packet may uh, go to the gateway here. Once it reaches the gateway, the problem may be on the router five or maybe on the router one or maybe on the router, this router, router two, or the problem may be on the router seven or the problem may be on the ISP side. So in the transit, you may have many routers. Let's say you have 20 plus routers in the transit. So you confirm that the problem is not in the LAN because almost all the users are facing the problem here. So, which means the problem may be in any one of the transit router. So now we need to identify where exactly the problem is because the problem may be one, maybe two, it depends, but we need to identify out of this four or five locations in my case, in my diagram, out of these five locations where exactly the problem. So the problem is any one of these routers, maybe on the ISP side as well. So now we need to start isolating the things. And again, as I said here, you need to have an idea about the topology and the configurations, the protocols, what we are using. So the question is like, which router should I start? So am I going to each and every device and check, which will be time consuming, or I'm going to skip some of the devices and start troubleshooting on any one of the selected device? Because when I say here, the problem means the problem can be anywhere. Like I said, the example, Let's say this user is facing a problem, is not able to access the internet. So how we are going to start? So the first thing we'll try to see whether the problem is, let's say the first thing we'll try to see here is the problem is with all the, all the users or only that particular user is facing the problem because this is very important to know. Because if, 
the user complains that the problem is with all the users, it means that the problem is with a centralized location. Means maybe the gateway or any of the transit routers the problem is. If only that particular user is facing the problem, which means the problem is within that particular PC. Maybe the software issue or browser issue or some internet setting issue or the IP addressing issue. Though so there are a few things which are relevant to that particular PC. So as I said here, we are not specifically getting into the individual devices. So we assume the problem is not with only that user. It is actually for all the users sitting in that lab. So now, once we do this, once we identify and isolate, now the next thing is we need to figure out, starting with, with the head office, like here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, whether this particular head office to the ISP is everything is okay means the user sitting here are able to access the internet if so then then it's fine because if the problem is with head office users also means most likely the problem may be on the isp side or on the head office side so once we fix that then automatically other other users also may get access other sites also make it access so we'll start with this part this one and once we confirm this particular part, then the next thing is what we'll do is we'll, we'll just go ahead and see, like let's assume that the, there is everything is okay here. The configurations, the head office is able to access. Now the problem can be on any one of these three routers. Like here, just three routers. Maybe in the transit, you may have 30 plus, 30 plus routers, let's say. So I'm going to each and every router and check. Now that's the question. Because when you start troubleshooting, it's not an easy job to go to each and every device and check. And also the time factor is also very important because if you go and check on each and every device, that, that may take the whole day probably you need to fix as soon as possible. Now what I can do is I can skip some of these devices. Like let's say, let's say this is how my devices are connected. Let's say maybe you got these many devices. So I'll just use some random names, A, B, C, D, E, F, let's say. Probably these are the names, okay? So this is my head office. Now I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to start the troubleshooting from router end. So, so I recommend you to just divide them into two halves. Let's say half here, this one. So in my case, what I'll do is I'll try to see whether this particular branch office is getting the default route or not. Let's say there is a default route here. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm going to check with the routing table. Let's say show IP route or maybe I'll generate some ping request to internet gateway Now I'll do some few verifications. We'll, we'll talk about verifications probably in our individual topics Now we'll try to confirm whether this particular default route is coming up to this part or not half of the network If everything is if it is okay means most likely there is no issue on this side right means which means you can start uh, checking the next devices so probably these are the devices what we can skip means you can save the time because if there is any problem in this particular transit routers like j or or all these devices here these devices then you should not be getting a default route you should not be uh, getting any uh, ping request replies those things and if there is an issue then most likely you can start troubleshooting. Again, you can jump, divide into half here, then check this part here, again, the same way. Now this way you can minimize the number of devices to check, and also it will speed up the troubleshooting process because, uh, you know, especially in, if you are doing troubleshooting, the main job of the troubleshooting is not only troubleshooting, but doing it in a specific point of time as fast as you can, even if you take the CCI lab exams probably they do they give some troubleshooting with the timers so that they, they will check your troubleshooting skills whether you are able to do it in a specific time or not so the same thing what is just in the CCI lab and probably in the production scenarios as well this this will play a major role so you need to know how to isolate how to minimize the time uh, while troubleshooting so if there is an issue here then what I'll do is again I'll, I'll start checking on this part if this is okay, then I'll start checking this part. Now like that you can minimize. So let's say there is no issue on this part. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here again on this part. Let's say there are remaining 10 devices. So what I'm going to do is again, I'll divide them into half, probably half here. Maybe, maybe three devices, two devices here, three devices here. Again, I'll follow the same steps. Now with this, uh, what we can do is we can easily isolate where the problem is in between which two routers that is important because the problem may be any one of those two routers. Maybe the problem is here or here. Maybe the neighborship is not forming or maybe the interface is down or whatever the issue. The problem may be one or two or maybe more, most likely one, let's say, but that problem may be any, any two routers in between. So you need to identify those specific two routers. That's important here. So that's what we'll be, we'll be seeing here. So whenever you are trying to do that, identify where the problem is in between which two routers. That's, that's important. So that is like the basic uh, step you need to troubleshoot. So these are some of the prerequisites because once you identify that, okay, the problem is between these two routers, now you can jump in and start troubleshooting between these two routers. Because without figuring out where the problem is, then how we are going to come to a conclusion, what is the problem? So this is just like I say, uh, we need to first identify where the problem is. And once we identify where the problem is, then we can identify what exactly the problem once we get into the individual configurations, that's something what we'll cover in our coming sections.